Hi, everybody. I am back with Brian Linser today from Inner Nicola Law Firm. We have been having a, a pretty great conversation lately around franchise law. He's my go-to franchise attorney. And so now we're going to dig into it. So for the next bunch of weeks, we're going to try to take that FDD and break it down. Um, when I introduce people to it, I kind of say it, it's kind of like dinner. So you've got the beginning of the FDDs, the appetizer, the item 19, and the fun stuff at the end is the dessert. And then there's all these meat and potatoes in the middle. Um, you know, five through seven is, is your protein, but then there's all these vegetables that you're kind of like, eh. <laughs> so Brian obviously has a much more um, detailed understanding and explanation. So today we're going to talk about the beginning. We're going to talk about that appetizer one through four. Um, Brian, fill us in. Why, why do we care? <laughs> <laughs> well, good questions. Good questions. And I, and I do think it's kind of like an appetizer. Um, you know, I think that's a good way to put it. Um, so one through four, they're, they're basically giving you background information on the franchise or, uh, okay. so, uh, just, uh, to give you a quick sample of what, what's involved, uh, item one is the corporate history, uh, that, that includes the franchise or entity. Okay. Any affiliate entities, right? And that the affiliate entities could be uh, corporate owned locations or it could be suppliers, right? If the franchisor is also an owner of the company that supplies the franchisees with, you know, with food products or whatever the case is, okay. um, that's disclosed there. So that's an important, you know, uh, relationship okay. to understand. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it basically uh, gives about a t a 10 years worth of um, history uh, as, as, you know, as it goes back. Are there any parent companies? Are there any, um, you know, predecessor companies that that go back prior to the franchise? Or so it basically gives you a background inf background information on the corporate uh, corporation itself and any okay. affiliate companies. And then you can look that up. I and mean, what's the the importance of that? I think for for who we're talking to is that you can go back. It's it's a disclosure. It's okay. Look at our history. Look at our track record. What's happened? Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. And basically, it's a talking point, right? Yeah. So let's let's open some books here, right? Yeah, I think I think items one through four, it's almost it's like background information. If we were doing a background check on the franchise or those mm -hmm. were the top four items would be the main background information. So item okay. two is is the management team, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to disclose anyone that's that's going to be part of your um, day to day with the franchise or is going to be listed there, right? So it's almost like a little mini resume. Uh, it right. goes back five years uh, and it gives, you know, so you can see the experience of the people that you're going to be dealing with for the next. Right. And I years. love that. Like, I actually find that super important, especially with our newer, smaller brands as they're coming in. I think it's important to work with people and find out, you know, is they probably have operational experience and that's great. But does anyone on that team have training experience, management of a franchise experience? And if they don't, Again, guys, it's not necessarily red flag, but it's, it's a talking point. Make sure then if there's no one in, like who's going to support me in my ownership beyond, you know, flipping the burgers or whatever the widget is. So, yeah, that's a great way to look at it. And I think you're right. It's not, it's not necessarily a red flag right away, but it's, let's get, let's get some more information. Let's go okay. back to the franchise and ask this question, you know, how does the management or may ask another franchisee, you know, how, how's the management team? You know, yeah. so it just prompts another question, more information. Good, good. Uh, um, item three, uh, that deals with litigation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, th and that litigation has to be material. Um, what so does the, that mean? So it, it has to be material to your decision of whether or not you would sign the franchise agreement. Right. Okay. So an example would be if one of um, their employees got into a car accident and is getting sued for $5,000, that wouldn't be material uh, okay. to a franchisee coming in. Okay. Uh, but if, if, the, if there's five franchisees that are getting together and suing the franchise or for whatever reason, that would be material. And that would be something that has to be disclosed, right? Okay. So that, that would affect your decision of whether or not to, to sign on with the franchise, right? right. So and usually when I'm talking to people, I say the bigger the brand, the longer it's been in business, generally you're going to see something in item three is, is, and again, not necessarily a red flag, more of a talking point. Sometimes it's a red flag. And okay, so let's take a look at this. But would you agree that, 
you know, my tenure, my legacies, my 20, 30 year brands, they're going to have a history. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, you know, what? there's what we, what I look for is, is like a percentage, right? If they have a hundred locations and there's, you know, five matters, litigated matters between franchisor and franchisee, that to me raises, you know, raises a, an issue. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you're always going to have out of the hundred, you're always going to have a couple. And it's just like, okay. If you own a restaurant, you're going to have some people that are going to give a bad Yelp review. You know, okay. it's, it's unusual that, that you have uh, a perfect score. And it's just the matter, it's just doing business and things happen that way. Okay. Um, so, but what we look for is more of a pattern. If, we're, if we see a lot of terminations and litigation um, and based on that, then that's an issue. Or if there's some, um, some like major event, class action lawsuits or, or something like that, that would be, a, you know, something big red flag right <laughs> yeah, that, that's something we want to look into and, and get more information on and sometimes a lot of times it could be just a one-off thing that people will get into a you know a, yeah they'll get into a scuffle and you know attorneys become involved and it gets ugly but yeah, so, yeah so, that makes sense though look for a history look for you know am i seeing something repetitive or is it something that i maybe can, can or can't understand so. Exactly. Um, so that's and that's and that's what we look for when we're, we're going through. Um, and then item four, um, that's kind of the last background type uh, type disclosure. That's mm -hmm. a, a bankruptcy disclosure. Okay. So that goes back again ten years. Um, any company that's listed in item one or any mat, uh, management team member in item two, if they filed bankruptcy over the last ten years, that that has to be disclosed. Okay. Um, and what we're looking for there is uh, situations where a franchisor, let's say, had a, another franchise system three years ago. They took everybody's franchise fees and, and filed bankruptcy. Um, and that's, they, they call it a pump and dump uh, operation. So we want to make sure we're not dealing with any people that are going to be doing, doing those types of things. Okay. I know your brands, I, I, you don't see I that. I never run into that, thank goodness. And so, hopefully... Yeah. wouldn't get that far. Right. <laughs> so I, hopefully that wouldn't even be one we talked about. But There, there are situations where there, there's a bankruptcy disclosed, but it, right. and it could be from, from years ago. One of the founders had a medical issue or... Right. You know, so, so it doesn't, if you see it there, it doesn't mean it's a red flag. Right. Um, you know, and, and most of the time it's not. But, um, but if we're, you know, we're, again, looking for patterns. I think as we go through the whole FDD, that's kind of what we're looking for from a, from a legal standpoint. You know, okay. we there are things that are going to pop up all the time and it's, it's never going to be a perfect FDD. It's unusual to find an actual perfect FDD, but uh, so we're looking for patterns instead of the one-off kind of things that happen in business. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate Thank you. it. Appreciate it.